want to talk about this one. Okay. So, Nate Shot did a video, and he's talking about how the gaming community wants games to fail. I want to hear about, I want to see here what he says. As somebody who's been in the game industry for 15 years, I think what we're seeing now is really just a massive amount of people organizing and saying, no, we don't want this. It is a free market. Back in the day, quote, you know, big quotations here, there were a lot of like very bad games that could still make a profit. But now with budgets being so high that a game has to just pop off to be profitable. When you see like these games failing, that's usually what happens. Like, oh, well, they ain't garner enough people. They can't sustain themselves and they close. So the studio closed. And I think that also there's so many good options for games right now that people can be picky. And that's a good thing. But I think some other people might view that as, you know what? They hate games. They want them to fail. When I think that we're just coming to expect more out of a game. But I think a great example of that is literally something that just happened, which is Hunt Showdown. Right now, is that mostly negative? And it's not because the new map sucks. It's not because the new engine sucks. It's not because the new weapons suck. It's because the UI sucks. And then everyone has to interact through that UI to get to the game. They have put so many friction points and they're trying to upsell you on all these skins that you don't have and you should buy them. And they pretty much copied COD's UI and then made it worse. Didn't know that was possible, but you know, good job. So I think this is honestly very appropriate, unfortunately, that they decided to have this really good part of the game, which is a new map. It looks beautiful. It's great. It has a lot of verticality. And then on top of that, they're like, oh, hey, let's try to pull as much money out of you as possible and make your experience worse with your loadouts, grouping with other players. And it's just like, why? Why did you make one experience so bad? And I think and the unfortunate part, right? I don't think the UX director let's make a experience right let's just let's just make a really bad experience i don't think the director was wanted to do that i don't think that that was their goal i think their goal was probably coming from c level or i mean they're but they're they're self-published so it's definitely from c level saying hey you know what we need to sell more skins that is your mandate make it happen but let's watch what nade shot says gaming community i'm serious too when i say this for some reason Everybody in the gaming community wants game. They want games to fail. It's very bizarre. I, I, no, they don't want games to fail. They just have a higher, they have a higher expectation of games now. And if you don't hit that expectation, why would they spend money? This is, this is the basis of a free market. You talk with your money. They're not wanting things to fail. They're just not happy. I mean, great examples of this is Concord. Who the f asked for Concord? Nobody asked for Concord. Let's make a game. That's kind of like Overwatch, 10 times worse, and has very uninspiring, very blah character designs that are not gonna appeal to people. Like the whole thing with X Defiant is still like stumps me to this day. People can why X Defiant was was hot trash. What what are you <laughs> X Defiant was an awful, awful experience of a game. People might be like tired of COD, you know, but COD feels good. And I think the one thing that he's and maybe he'll get into it. I don't think the one thing that he's not really discussing is the fact that there is only so much room at the top in the mid. So you have a Valorant, you have PUBG, you have Tarkov, you have COD, <laughs> you know, you have Overwatch, you have Marvel Rivals coming out. And then they think that they're going to pull market share with a very uninspiring design. Like what does X Defiant do that's different other than, hey, uh, we took all of our IPs and we jammed them into a game, but then we made, you know, movement feel like dog water. And I uh, hope you like it. Spend money. Like, no. What? Why? Again, this just goes back to uninspiring design and they wasted, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars. And that's on them. I mean, Ubisoft is, well, we've already said that Ubisoft is going to be a company that probably won't be around in 10 years. And if they are around, they're probably going to be bought up by somebody else. Because right now they have just been just taking L's constantly. I mean, literally today, they just had a layoff today. Playing about not having enough games to play. But when new games come out, even even just in the first 10 seconds, it feels like he's focusing on the vocal minority people who actively want games to fail. Yeah, most likely. I mean, that's probably what he's seeing, right? And I feel like there's a, you know, there is like the Reddit and Twitter crowd, which are very, uh, very loud and and rightfully so. I mean, that's their right to be that loud. You know, there is the the normies, the casuals who don't care. You know, we talked, we just talked about Hunt. Hunt, there, there's probably normies and, and people like, you know, weekend gamers. They don't give a about the new update they play once a week 
maybe or like once every two weeks they don't really care they're just there to like pew pew and get the f out you know they don't have time i think the people that he's talking about are like the ones that live and breathe games say you know what everything sucks except for cs 1.6 and honestly that's the majority of players yeah yeah i feel like the i feel like this, these markets don't understand specifically um the western market doesn't understand that they are not the majority in most ips china and the east mainly china spend more money per person by a huge amount compared to the west it's not it's not even comparable that's why you know we'll talk about gacha games for a second but that's why with gacha games there is a split between how much they made in china versus how much they made in the rest of the world and usually the china part of it is more they've earned more in china than they have in the rest of the whole world so let that sink in imagine how much america spends on certain games and i think there's games that are definitely more popular in the west but i don't feel like anybody uh, no, i'm gonna say anybody there's definitely people that wish ill you know upon game studios or whatnot just because they don't like you know x y and z but again i feel like it's just companies coming out like what's it called suicide squad suicide squad is a great example of no one can ask for it it had terrible design it had a terrible game design let alone the whole story and you know the multiverse shit with freeze none of that the core design of it right the thing that keeps you playing a game was absent it was soulless and it was just a carbon copy of other games being frankenstein together and they hoped it worked you know they wanted that destiny they wanted that destiny formula and it just failed horribly for them before they had played it they're like that game sucks i'm not going to play it okay i'm not gonna lie i've done this with fable i i do not want to play a game where the main character looks like they got hit by the side of a bus i just don't it's supposed to be a fantasy and i understand fable has never been like wow everyone's a supermodel right it's always been kind of like a goofy funny game the reality in marketing is sex sells it does different varying degrees and it seems like for the west they want to kind of like shy away from that where the east is like hey you know what let's look at let's look at first ascendant there's just asses everywhere and they're making a ton of money you know and i feel like there's going to be a wake-up call when enough studios close be like huh maybe they were onto something Listen, man, if we keep tearing down these studios trying to make good games, like, yeah, not every single one is going to be fun and not every single one is going to be a hit. But if we're sitting here, like, preying on its downfall before the game even comes out, what do you think is going to happen? No. What? Okay, I feel like this is a weird take. I feel like people are heavily influenced by the trailers. And, I mean, a great one is, is uh, what's it called? Dragon Age. This is a great example, Dragon Age. Dragon Age's first trailer was dog water it portrayed the game in not a great light and the second one did really great and showed the action and showed a little bit more about the game and people are like oh you know what that's not bad so when it comes down to marketing they really need to stop trying to shovel stuff out as soon as possible and then hope for the best and actually really think about what is you only get one first impression and i feel like the opposite happened for hunt where hunt was everyone was fucking hyped as hell for that update and then they experience that ui and they experience that friction and that overselling because everything has a fucking battle pass and everything has skins and everything is going to just be like hey 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 just spend five bucks hey give me 10 bucks hey give me give me 20 bucks just trying to reach farther and farther into your fucking wallet and i think people are kind of tired of it them showing off dragon age starting mission it broke up into different sections as the first gameplay reveal was such a miss yeah no it was it was complete miss and honestly that marketing team you can make mistakes as long as you learn from them you know and i think that unfortunately that mistake is gonna probably affect their sales it really will nobody's gonna be investing in gaming and making new games <laughs> okay i know that nade shot you know is a partner at 100 thieves but the fact that he even said that shows that he knows so little about the business of gaming and the fact that gaming is bigger than all other forms of entertainment globally are you kidding me it's a vc's firm's wet dream and that's that's honestly the issue you're running into it's actually the opposite it's vc firms investing in these companies and these companies are these publishing companies are taking really bad deals 
and then having to shove out crap that's not ready yet, that's not polished enough yet, because they have to meet these deadlines because the shareholders are saying, release it now. It's, it is the complete opposite. He has no idea what the f he's talking about with this. None. What I will say though, is that investments have dried up and it's not because gaming bad or games have failed. It is because we no longer have free money and the interest rates have skyrocketed. So everyone is tightening their belt because we're in a recession, whether you want to say so or not. He's taking like outside factors that affect everything about our daily life and then being like, oh, that's why they're not making games. It's like, no. And you're not going to have shit to fucking play. You're going to be sitting here playing MW2 Remastered, Remastered Edition. You're going to be sitting here trying to play fucking the same old games for the thousandth time because these billionaires and, and, and fucking multi-million billion dollar publishers they're not gonna they're not gonna green light any new games any new co concepts any new ip I uh, no 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 the, the, every publishing company usually has roughly anywhere from four to ten ips that they're working on internally and they could just be like little prototypes they are constantly working on new games but the reality is is that, is it the right time to release it? Is the public ready for this? Is it a new and fresh idea? There's so many checks and balances from a market research and positioning standpoint that he's just like, well, why are the, why are the games not getting released? It's just such a weird fucking take. <laughs> this is a take from somebody who has no idea how the gaming industry fucking operates. From green lighting projects to creating projects to fucking doing all the marketing for it. Like he has no idea. He's just a gamer. There's so many games coming out, mostly in the indie. Oh yeah, no, and honestly, the double A space is where like a lot of gaming is. And that's because so many people got fired or let go <laughs> that they went to smaller studios or they got burnt out and they went to smaller studios because triple A right now was just a fucking meat grinder. And most people are burned out. I think I was reading an article where they were saying how it was like 85% of the people working in AAA are just burnt out? I mean, I try to put myself in the shoes of myself when I was like 16 years old, but I can't. I was excited for new games when they came out. The problem is now we have too many options. We've seen too many different games. We've seen too many different what? ways to what? interact with games. Yeah? Like, back in the day, bro, when in 2000... So what he's, he's saying is that because we have too many options now, people want things to fail. Like that's a weird, that's weird. That's a weird take. That's a, that's such a fucking like right turn. Be like, man, there's so many options that like, uh, it's like, yeah, there's so many options. So things have to fail. Not everything can succeed in a free market. I feel like people are just more well-informed now. And because they're more well-informed, they are making more informed decisions. Go figure, right? Yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like when him, him talking about how hey, when he was 16, he was excited for stuff. And now that he's older, he's not. I mean, that's just fucking life. <laughs> like, I don't know. I feel like that's just like, yeah, that's that's what happens when you get older. I feel like he's calling people spoiled because he's gotten used to actually good games with good marketing and good GUI uh, instead of being grateful for whatever crunch time crack pipe big companies spit out. Yeah, true. I, I feel like that's actually go see. I feel like that is probably one of the best statements there where there are so many games and there are so many really polished games or games that, you know, have like Baldur's Gate. There are there are so many games out there that we, we've had too many good games and the time of just riffraff bullshit games is gone. You can't make a profit off those unless you're a, unless you're a solo dev working for five years, you know, but I think that he's just he's just he wants the nostalgia days of going to GameStop and everyone's excited for like Modern Warfare. And those days are gone. The, the new days are Fortnite with communal events and, you know, games that are trying to break the mold. And I think there's games and FPSs out there that are trying to break the mold. But I feel like most of the games that try to break the mold are going to fail. And there's going to be like one success out of like probably 20 to 30 games that come out. But let's be honest. Like, do you think that Shroud's fucking Valorant clone will succeed? I don't think so. I think it's going to fucking just it's gonna fucking collapse in on itself because what did it bring that other games don't have so Baldur's Gate 3 and Shadow of the Earn Tree came out within a year of each other and those games are people were hyped over oh yeah no I think that people want good games and people don't want shit games and then there is the double a area where like I get a short game but it's really good 
And by good, I don't mean visuals, I mean gameplay. The gameplay is sound. They made something fun. Evan, when Halo 3, Gears of War 1, and Call of Duty Modern Warfare dropped the same fucking year, bro, the, we were lined up outside of GameStops, whether it was in a mall or attached to a fucking Hollywood video, sitting there waiting, camped out, drinking fucking Mountain Dew, waiting for these new games. I mean, it just sounds like he wants more communal stuff, which isn't going to happen anymore. Like, time, times have changed. Man yells at Sky. But again, we've gotten a fuck ton of amazing games come out in the past two years. Just absolute bangers. Yeah, this, this very much deflates his point. Games for the midnight release. Everybody was so excited about it. Now when new games come out, we're fucking sitting around a goddamn fire witch artifact like doing a satanic ritual for the game to fail miserably. I don't really get it. it what? <laughs> Wait, that's how it ends. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I really. So everyone's sitting there waiting for it to fail. I, I just don't think that he is that this is, he is not the target demographic anymore. And he doesn't like that. We had that discussion a couple, a couple days ago. When you're not the target demographic, you're not going to be happy with a lot of the games that are coming out. I think X Defiant, like he mentioned that one, that one's a fucking great example. That is a soulless copy paste game. It fucking moves. It shoots like trash. No one likes it. No one's having fun in it. And yeah, it has shit numbers because the public has other better options. When you make a game and you're spending hundreds of millions of dollars on a game, you have to ask yourself, what are we offering or what are we doing better that is going to give us market share? And if you can't answer that question, maybe you should fucking stop production. I do find it weird that people get mad about games that aren't marketed towards them. Yeah, I mean, that's just, I feel like that's gamers though. And that's, that's a lot of people. They're like, I'm not the target demographic and I don't like this. And it's like, okay, don't fucking buy it. It's really simple. It's, it is the simplest thing. You speak with your wallet. But yet, there's going to be people that do like it. He kind of sounds like the reason why devs are beginning to shift away from listening to audiences. I mean, that's always been the case. Honestly, devs have always not wanted to hear. Devs never want to hear what the audience has to say. Um, because devs think that they know best. Always. Um, they really do. Devs think that the, the general audience is stupid. And I'm just talking literally from experience here. The devs think that the audience is stupid. They don't know what they want. And I would argue to a certain point yes but you have to understand that when they say that you could be like hey you know what i really don't like this game feature or i don't like this and you have to understand and be like okay what's the root cause of that because what they're saying versus what they mean is two different things it, there could be a separate cause that's causing friction and if you fix that they'll be like oh yeah this is fine this is fine yeah, yeah i like that now so you just need devs to kind of go a little bit deeper and that's what most, I feel like the good ones do that. They understand that. Devs can call me stupid all they want. The proof is in the in their sales. Yeah, that's what a free market is.